You're listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What's going on, everybody? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome into the MLB DFS Playbook Show here. Uh, breaking down Friday's 11-game main slate here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm social channels. Uh, James, it is Friday. We've made it. It's the end of the work week here. Well, end of the work week for most, not for us, but end of the work week for most. Uh, a little 11-game main slate over on DraftKings. We're going to be breaking down here today. 11 games on the docket. Um, some pretty big names. I feel like Shohei and Valdez have been on every slate together this year, like the last five slates. Uh, we have some elite pitching, Joe Ryan, Kode Senga, Paxton. We have a, a plethora of big time pitchers on this slate. Uh, great American in play, Arizona headed there, no course field. It's a great day to be great, John. That's all I got to say. It is a great day to be great. And, uh, you know, we do have uh, maybe some potential weather to pay attention to here. Um, looking at the Friday forecast in Boston, uh, rain starts to, the rain percentages start to tick up. Isolated thunderstorms starting at 6 p.m. Uh, jumps up to about 50% as we hit the 8, 9, 10 o'clock hour. So it uh, could be a little wet here uh, up on the East Coast. I know New York uh, also showing the uh, the little weather uh, rain symbol and pulling up the uh, New York City weather uh, for Friday as well. Uh, same deal. Where th- This one... This game, it, it kind of starts to wind down, so maybe a delayed start in uh, in the New York game. We, there are thunderstorms starting all day, starting at 7 a.m., basically 50, 60, 70% chance of thunderstorms all the way. Uh, it clears out around 8 p.m., according to the hourly forecast right now. If that moves slower, though, that means the storm lingers a little bit longer. So uh, New York, maybe a, a delayed start in their matchup against uh, Kansas City. Uh, Boston? Might have to play wet uh, in their matchup against the Mets there. So uh, two games to pay attention to when it comes to weather, but at least the rest of the slate looks pretty clear. Yeah. Well, I mean, another day, another day where a few games could be impacted by rain. But, you know, we move we move on and we uh, give the people what they want, and that's some winning picks, Sean. That's true. Before we get into uh, breaking down tonight's DFS slate, quick shout-out to Real-Time Fantasy Sports. Uh, go to time, rtsports.com slash alarm. Uh, new users who sign up will get a 100% deposit match up to $200 when they use code ALARM23. Uh, they have DFS picking games for PGA, uh, MLB, NFL, NHL, NBA, all that good stuff that's starting up. Uh, they have it there. You can uh, have an opportunity to 40X your entry there. Uh, if you can go, uh, what is it, five for five, six for six, yeah. uh, you can go ahead and get 40X return. Uh, if you want to use their mulligan option, it gives you an opportunity uh, to get one wrong for a little bit of a reduced payout there. Uh, but still a lot of great things happening over at Real Time Fantasy Sports for their DFS picking games. But of course, they're also renowned for their uh, best ball and, and seasonal fantasy contests. Uh, so you can check all of that out there over at RT Sports. Again, rtsports.com slash alarm. Promo code alarm23 will get users a 100% deposit match up to $200 there. Um, let's go on over, James. Let's break down the uh, DraftKings uh, main slate here for this evening. We'll get into it. Like we said, uh, we got 11 games to talk about here on the main slate. Uh, Shohei Otani is our top price pitcher on the slate. Uh, Fran Valdez, as you mentioned, 10-8. Joe Ryan, 10-6. Three guys up over $10,000 here. Um, Otani versus Pittsburgh, though, man. That is uh that is a matchup to sink your teeth into. Yeah, maybe his last start as an angel as well, as the trade Good deadline deal. is uh ever so close to us. What now. this upcoming Tuesday? Yeah, right? ten days. Uh ten days, ten days yeah, ten, ten, days days, okay. ten days away. Um yeah, I mean Actually, Shohei Yeah, uh look, it's a dream spot. Uh it's eleven K, it's expensive, but he is a guy. Now, has he labored through some of these last couple starts? Sure. Uh, He definitely struggled in Houston. He definitely struggled in San Diego. But we know the upside in the White Sox start. He had 10 strikeouts, 33 fantasy points. Um, Tougher teams, he's had some trouble. The easy teams, he has not. Yeah. So I I definitely think it's viable. And, like, 
most of this top tier is in a pretty good spot. Like Otani's in a good spot. Framber is in a really good spot against Oakland. And Joe Ryan is in a really good spot against the White Sox as well. Yeah. How many times has Framber played Oakland this year? We got two starts. He's two and a 15 innings, one earned, 12 Ks. That's yeah. good. Pretty good. That's pretty it's, good. I think it's pretty good. So Averaging over seven innings a start is uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. One fantasy points a game, pretty good. Pretty good for the relief pitcher that is Fran Bravaldez. Yep, uh, yep, relief pitcher, got it. Yep. Uh, Joe Ryan, as you mentioned, gets min- against the White Sox here. Uh, nothing wrong going with Joe Ryan. Uh, State Chicago won six innings, one hit allowed, shout out seven Ks there, but he's clearly the third man of that yep. uh, grouping. Sure. Um, we'll see if the Boston Mets game goes off, but if it does play, do you like Senga or Paxton in this uh, in their matchups here? I mean, Senga's been really good. Lately, um, the strikeouts have been on full display, eight or more in four of his last five start, including three in a row. And we had the 12 strikeout game against Arizona. Um, you know, that's been in large part. The walks have been cut down a little bit from the four and five. He was consistently putting forth earlier can get there. I think Paxson is fine for GPPs to bounce back. I mean, you know, blipping the radar against the Cubs. It happens. Like he's yep. had one bad start since the beginning of the year, the angel start and this and then everything else has been pretty glistening. So, uh, yeah, I'd go back to the well with Paxton in tournaments. Yeah, Paxton just got tagged by Bellinger. It was a, I think it was Bellinger hit a hit like a grand, grand slam off him. Or something a grand like slam, yeah. And so, we know, and we know Bellinger has been dominated against lefties this year. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, you know, can can go if that game plays for sure. Um, Miller, Peralta, Suarez, uh, your next grouping there. Um, obviously, Peralta against Atlanta more likely to. Uh, Fade Bryce Miller against Toronto could be interesting. Toronto just is a weird team this year uh, in yep. terms of how their offense performs. Uh, Rangers swore a start of the year with us looking to sack against them. He then he went on a crazy run where nobody could touch him. Now he's starting to flip the other way again. Where are you on Rangers Suarez here against the Guardians? Um, given that he doesn't have like a big ceiling in terms of strikeouts it's probably a fade for me because the guardians don't really strike out to begin sure. with and they hit lefties kind of well so i'll probably pass i think the next name i would probably get to and someone that we've stacked a lot against it's lance lynn the one thing i'll say is that he is missing a lot of bats when they're not lefties right hitting home mm-hmm. runs off him. if he can avoid julian and if he can avoid kirloff and kepler and Gallo. And Gallo. Well, I mean, but that's part of the strikeout appeal, too. Like, all those guys are strikeout prone. Yeah. Minnesota strikes out more than anyone else against Brady. So yep. I would get to Lance Lynn. I'd also be okay stacking people against Lance Lynn or playing one-offs against Lance Lynn. Um, but nobody in this tier has four double-digit strikeout games on their resume. In this no. Game. So I'm okay with getting to Lynn here. Uh, I don't care for a lot of the value. I mean, Gonsolin gets Texas, not not a spot. Lively against Arizona in Cincinnati, not a spot I'm looking at. Keeney versus the Dodgers. Gavin Williams gets Philly. Soraka gets Milwaukee, maybe, but Milwaukee is, you know, they're, they're hitting. We are. Shout out to yeah. our guy in chat this morning talking about uh, the Brewers heating up. We kind of thought maybe Ty Walker was a decent play. He turned out okay, it but okay, they get yeah. Milwaukee ended up, uh, you know, winning that game. Yelich with the big three-run home run uh, in that game. Sears against Houston, probably a no. Tommy Henry versus Cincinnati, probably a no. So, like – Clark Schmidt. You think Clark Schmidt's your guy? Yep. Royals okay. um, coming off his best start of the year post-All-Star break. In Coors Field, by the way, eight strikeouts. Again, it's all about the strikeouts for me. Last two starts, eight strikeouts – seven strikeouts he's using relief before the break because you know we had a break so anybody and everybody was used in relief appearances right. so uh clark schmidt has 95 strikeouts and 94 innings this year he's has he struggled with lefty sure kansas city doesn't we've already talked about it in nausea they're 29th right. in ops against righties they're 30th in woba against righties um i think clark schmidt makes for a pretty good value down here and honestly someone who i was stacking against right off the bat john alec marsh on the flip side of this matchup, 11 strikeouts against Tampa Bay, five in all three starts. Like this guy was terrible in triple a last year. He was two and 16 between double a and triple a last year. He turned yeah. around before getting the call. If you're telling me that he has this type of upside, 11 strikeouts. The Yankees are abysmal. They are abysmal. Harrison Bader might not be in the lineup again with the, after getting hit, 
with a pitch. He was getting x-rays on Thursday. We know Judge isn't there. They're a mess. They're breaking fans. They can't yeah. hit. Like, I would probably take a shot on Marsh at 5K or Tom. Like, one of the pitchers in this game is uh, is going to be a really good value. Yeah, I, I'm in a I'm a full agreement with you there. I'm kind of just kind of running through some of these numbers here. He had 75 strikeouts and 62 minor league innings. Um, it looks like there. So, um, yeah, well, it seems to be a big a big strikeout guy. Uh, at least at the minor league level, struggled more at Double A. Went to Triple A and actually pitched kind of well. So yeah, maybe mm-hmm. I like Mars. I mean, the home runs are an issue, but yep. Yankees aren't hitting home runs. So. No, nope, we're not. No. Um, yeah, listen, I think the best case scenario would be for this game to get delayed and then start late so these pitchers yeah. don't get interrupted. Yeah. Right? So, yep. uh, moving on over to catcher, uh, talk to me about, I guess, the catcher, but the infield in general. Um, tell me about where we're looking to spend up for when it comes to the infield today. Yeah, so Mookie Betts only second base eligible now, by the way. Um, no longer in the outfield. Uh, that's yeah. also, I mean, they sent Vargas down. He is playing there pretty much. Yep. every day so uh i think mookie bets against andrew haney is a good bets for uh something big here um considering haney's struggles of sure. late um i mean no he came off that really good start his last time out but he got tagged by washington he's back to giving up a lot of home runs i mean yeah. seven home runs in his last five starts is not great uh so mookie bets at the top for me um Anyone Houston related in the infield, JP Sears, I like Bregman. I like, um, we know Jeremy Pena has really good success against left handed pitching. Yeah. It's going to be hard not to want to stack Reds in, in some capacity when you get Tommy Henry on the mound. I know yeah. Tommy Henry. In ha- Cincinnati, you know. Yeah. Like, like it's, it's pretty appealing. So, um, where do we got? I think. Do you think today? Ellie sits here? We've seen India sit. We've seen McLean sit. I sit. We could see Who's it. the next guy on on the bench? Feels like it could be an Ellie. Yeah, it could be an Ellie sit. I would still play him. I bench, hoping he breaks out here. Um, I know he's done most of his damage against left-handed pitching at the big leagues, but he had a good split um, from the right side in the minors. It could actually be Votto with a lefty on the mound. Yeah, it could be Votto, and they play steer. Um, and at they first. just play steer at first base. Yeah, yeah. it could definitely be the case. Um. Because then you because you play steer at first and you still have one of and Encarna- like one of them's DHing and then one of them second. What does your outfield look like though? Because they have all le- outfield lefties. Mm, I guess they just um, play him because Steer would have gen- generally played one of the corner outfield positions probably. Well, you play you play S- Senzel is probably only playing against lefties now. Sure. I mean, he is only playing against lefties. Yeah. Friedel has at bats against lefties and like Fraley doesn't. I don't think Fraley has like any at bats against lefties this year. Right. And you probably can't take Will Benson out of the lineup at this point. I, I would right. hope not with the way <laughs> this not, man's playing. You probably can't take him out of the lineup. So like Benson, Friedel, Senzel. Senzel. And then yeah. you just oh. as first first sign of a righty, Senzel's out of the game for Fraley yeah. pinch hit. Yeah, probably how it goes. I would agree with you. Um, I think you'll run back to Atlanta again. I, I listen, I like Freddie Peralta. He's on my fantasy team, but uh, Matt Olson double donged today after. I mean, we were waiting, right? We were waiting for the break. I have a third perfect <laughs> I know. today, and they still scored seven runs and hit four home runs. Austin Riley, home run and a triple. Michael Harris came through. So, like, I, I am still in on Atlanta here. Now they're in Milwaukee, which is a good hitter's park, too. Like, Sign me up. Sign me up for some Atlanta. So annoying. It's annoying. Like, and this has been MLB DFS for me in a nutshell, and I tweeted it out on Thursday. They get a matchup against Ryan Nelson and do literally nothing on Wednesday, and then they get a matchup against Zach Allen where they're being perfect gamed and then yeah. still score seven runs and four home runs in a three-inning span. Like, yeah, where I'm not playing. Like, that's what MLB DFS has come to me re- lately. Uh, it's been a brutal, brutal couple – couple weeks john yeah um i also think texas is in a good spot here they're now yeah. they're expensive obviously but gonsolin's peripheral numbers have just indicated for most of the year that he was pitching a little bit better than or, or worse than his numbers were looking like um you know seager 62 but uh once again i look at his last 10 games and there he is 300 with a thousand it's just like like clockwork guy doesn't yeah. guy doesn't struggle so um yeah i like that if we're looking at for some value 
uh, here on the infield position. Where are we uh, taking a peek at? So lefty on the mound for Toronto, Unigenio Suarez is $2,800. Um, he has been scorching the earth hot lately. Um, and he did it again on Thursday, not with a home run, but uh, two hits again on Thursday, double digit fantasy points again on Thursday. So um, Unigenio Suarez, 2800 we know his pedigree against left-handed pitching i think he really stands out going up against yusei kikuchi who as we know just allows a lot of home runs that is yeah. what yusei kikuchi um does um i like other- candelario at third as well again get a left yep. uh, and alex wood here going up against washington yeah that's a good one um if you are not playing Alec Marsh and as Wald Peraza is leading off, I'm okay getting there. Uh, Emmanuel Rivera homered off of Spencer Strider on Thursday. You know, home runs in two straight games now for Emmanuel Rivera. If he's starting, I know Ben Lively is back, but that's in in uh, in Great American. Look, you got to play Wilmer at this point. He homered again on Thursday. And I know I touted it's only uh, Wilmer Flores, by the way. Yeah, first that's annoying. Um, I know I touted uh, Lance Lynn, but again, lefties are his kryptonite. So if you Julian. do want to play Minnesota, yeah, I mean Julian is Kirloff. yeah Julian is what thirty one, same price. Kirilov twenty two, same exact price. Kep, uh, Kep, we'll get to the outfield in a bit, but uh, sure. those are some of the good values for me. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there uh, as well. I don't really have too much to add. Uh, C.J. Abrams is another guy that I would just mention. I know it's a lefty, lefty, but I mean the man is he's here, right? Like he is yep. uh, really hitting the ball well. Doesn't really matter who's on the mound for him. There, his stolen base potential uh, as well. So uh, in uh, on some C.J. Abrams, thirty three hundred dollars uh, for him. There's another value piece. Uh, moving on over to the outfield here. Uh, top guys here are obviously, uh, you know, Acuna. You have Tucker against Lefty, who he's been mashing against left-handed pitching here. Uh, Corbin Carroll homered uh, after, again, doing nothing for a little bit. Boom, great player. He gets lively in Cincinnati. Got to like that uh, prospects for him there. Yeah, I think he'll probably be one of the higher-owned uh, outfielders of the day because, like you said, he was he had a stolen base early. He got on base. Like, he had a walk, scored a run. Corbin Carroll things and then was just like, nah, oh, let me just, right. <laughs> let me just, yeah, let me just hit another late home run. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, he's a he special. He has hit dude. a lot of hit, late home runs, hasn't he? That Atlanta he, game, 16 13, that was a late home run. Dude, he's done uh, it a, he's done a lot of yeah. late damage. Um, so, a little bit of a home run, uh, route, route though. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't the 16 13 game. It was maybe the Mets game he had a late home run. One of these games late recently, he had a, he had a later home run, but, uh, today's one, was a late home run as well, yeah. I think he... I love Kyle Tucker against lefties. It doesn't scare me. Um, I continue to say I play Kyle Tucker when he's scorching hot and he's still doing the damn thing. So uh, those two probably for me above 5K and, and J.D. Martinez against Heaney just for the home run upside. I will say, I mean, whatever Christian Yelich is on, I, want some, dude, <laughs> I was going to wait like, for you. I think you mentioned him. I mean, like he is another three hits, another home run. Um, him and Cody Bellinger probably like called each other, like, "Hey, let's do you want to do you want to turn it back on for the everyone to show them what we that we just haven't cared for?" And, yeah. and Cody Bellinger put down his blunt and was like, "Yeah." And then, I know. mean, they, yeah, there it's wild to see the seasons that these guys are having. Uh, Ballinger, you know, could be a guy that's traded, you know, at this point, yeah, basically the be. way he's, uh, he's performing right now. So uh, I'm in there. Lane Thomas at 48 gets the lefty. I, I like Stanton. You know, again, Marks has been giving up a lot of home runs. You want to take a dart on the home run play? Could go Stanton there. Steer gets the lefty. Uh, you get Yoshida versus Senga. That's just an interesting matchup for the, yep. the story behind it. Yep. Um, you know, he's $4,600. You know, again, a, a Red Sox guy that has been white hot. 378 with a thousand OPS. We know that uh, Jaron Duran has been really hot. He's at 4K here um, as well. The Angels, Moniac at 41 against Dude. Oviedo, right? Like that's a pretty good spot for him. Yeah, lefties against Oviedo have been uh, very fruitful. 
So I'm definitely down to get to Moniac. The only downside to Moniac is he strikes out a lot, but he's been incredible. He's hitting third, too. They're batting him yeah. third behind Otani. So he's getting a lot of pitches to handle. Yep. Uh, no disrespect to Michael Harris, so I skipped there to go to Moniac. He is also a very good player. So Yeah, very good player. Can go there against uh, against them if you want to. Uh, under 4K, what's the uh, what's sticking out to you here? Chaz McCormick, 3,700. He continues to rake. Um, four home runs in his last three games. You know, just water is wet. Homered again on Wednesday. Uh, Michael Conforto and the lefty giant bats are just too cheap against Jake Irvin. Jake Irvin has struggled specifically against lefties this year. So you can get to him. Um, with, or you can get to Conforto or Yastrzemski down here who are just far too cheap uh, for their upside. Teoscar versus the lefty? And then Teoscar against the lefty. Yep. I know, the, I know his numbers have sucked, but his numbers against lefties are still good this year. So Numbers against lefties are still good this year. Um, let's see. Numbers against lefty. I'm just going to pull them up too just for, for uh, lefty on the mound. Do, 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 I guess do, I'll caveat do. saying that when the, I put them in my prize six plays a few days ago, the lefties against never, the numbers against lefties are still good. Uh, we'll yeah, see so they, they'll still be good. They'll still be good. Uh, it's taking my computer is not responding right now, so I'm just gonna uh, actually. Call the day. I mean, like what, dude? It's just every time there's more than two fan graphs tabs yeah, open. I got it. I got it up. Lance lefties two eighty six with a five seventy one slug. Yep. And that's good, right? 286 ISO. That's, yeah, all those things. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah good. Uh, Texas guys down here, Duran and uh, so Tavares. Um, just for reference here, let's see what Gonsolin is sitting at these days here. Tony Gonsolin, fan graphs. Um, uh, yeah, still not good. Uh, 502 XFIP, 470 FIB, expected ERA 488. So, uh, I am still very much willing to stack against this Dodgers pitcher here. And if yeah. you're going to spend sixty three hundred dollars in Seager, you're going to need three K <laughs> of Leodis, uh, Leodis, and Duran and uh, Janikowski's twenty nine hundred dollars. Sure. So, uh, speaking uh, of cheap outfielders, Jake McCarthy three K. Yep, Jake McCarthy three K. Well, think he would be off because yeah. he hit seventh today. So, yeah. Um, Big sad there. Uh, I like jokes here at 3K as well. Um, oh, you know, Stone at Garrett. Guys. Stone Garrett? Stone Garrett for sure. Uh, again, dude, I played I played the Nationals the other day. It worked out fine. So, like, <laughs> you guys should too. <laughs> you guys should. They're, they're, they're actually kind of an interesting team. So, yep. um, especially, I mean, against lefties and righties really this year. They, they're hitting the ball pretty well. Uh, Alex calls another one that you can find your way uh, yeah. into the lineup for um, as well as a cheap guy. That was a good call. Thanks. Uh, Kepler versus Lynn. You mentioned lefty power. That's it. Uh, yeah, it's probably. Unless there's uh we didn't mention CES, but CES in the infield, by the way, still. Oh yeah. What's his, uh, uh, they moved to first base only. Yeah, he moves his position first base. First base only. Well, that's interesting because Here's if Votto if Votto sits, oh. when Votto sits, you can play CES at first if you want. True. All right, uh, let's get into our uh, lineup building process here. Yeah, let's get in. Let's go. Just plugging Otani or plugging Framber. Mm. I don't think we can play both. No, no, no. Let's not. Uh, we might be able to. Strand at first. We have some cheap nationals. It's it, it might oh. we, have some, we have some time. We have some time. Let's play around with it. Uh and there are let's see value catcher. Got Kybert. Uh Candelario. Uh, Stone Garrett, right? 3,700. What else did we have for some value? We had uh, McCarthy. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. We're up to 4K here. Uh, second base. Julian. Yeah, Julian, 31. 3,500. Let's see. Can we, what's our spend up? Do we want to ask, do we want to try to fit Seeger or do we want to go outfield with spend up? Well, you could do Leodi and then maybe get Seeger. 
Let's see. Leody. We're just shy of Seeger. Could we go? Janikowski. $100 off. $100 off. Well, nobody plays Kybert, so uh, <laughs> let's. Um, Let's see here. You could also go down if we're playing Julian. We play Kirilov at first instead. True. Unless we wanted to play. Yeah, no, no, no. That's actually a great call. Kirilov. They hit first and second. They hit Julian hit first. Kirilov hit second on Thursday. Okay. Uh, I'm down with that, and we can go back to Kybert then. There's seven hundred dollars now. Go up from Janikowski to uh, Leody or Tver or uh yeah do you have a preference of Duran or Leodis? Um, Let's see Gonsolin splits here. Are they both switch hitters? No, right? No. Oh, T- Tavares one. is and Duran only hits yeah. from the right, right side. Let's see. Uh 281 Woba versus lefties. So that's the weird thing, right? Like all of his numbers are good but they're not good. Let's let's see XFIP. Let's see XFIPs here. Uh XFIP versus lefties is 478. Versus righties, it's five twenty-five. So oh, Leody, maybe. so Leody, who's been better? Uh, Three fifty-seven Woba, two ninety-eight average against righties. He's been better. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so if we're gonna go double spend up, we gave ourselves a Nationals twin stack um, with uh, the Seager bump at sixty-two hundred dollars at short with uh, Leody's and a one-off Jake McCarthy because he's our boy. Um, that's not a terrible lineup. Like that not lineup, lineup. That lineup could do some things. And now the lineup could also we we could have a lot of zeros. It could definitely have a lot of zeros. But the pitching should be elite. Let's do you want to quickly yeah. put together a Otani Marsh or a Framber? Yeah, let's go Schmidt. Marsh, here. Schmidt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and we'll we'll re rack here. We what's got your, a pretty what's good your stack that you like? Um The Angels are really good against Oviedo. The Mar- yeah, there's some cheap- that we can't use Otani. I know. There's cheap Mariners. Um, you want to go Suarez? Yeah, Suarez is really cheap at third. Suarez at third. He's been really good. Okay. Uh, I mean, the Reds are hard to ignore. You San Francisco go is good. So we'll go back to Strand? Yeah, we can go back to Strand. That would provide us a steer in the outfield with a lefty on the mound. Sure. 4,700. They'll probably stack each other, too. That's probably right next to each other in the lineup. Yeah. Are you comfortable with um, with uh, Kybert still? Yeah. Okay. He's good, dude. Uh, 4,700 for second, short, and two outfielders. Um, I mean, Julian still is good, but do you have another yeah. No, we could just play Julian. He's a default because okay. we'll be able to afford pretty much anything we want. 200, yeah, we can fit whoever we want here. I'll go. I'm just going to go back to one off and Seager. $4,700. Feels play. good for two outfielders. That feels good. And we we, we liked some cheaper guys down here. We can still play Moniac. Still yeah, Moniac. that's what I was thinking too. Moniac and then 5400 for JD Yelich. Yelich. I was against Soroka. Yelich. Okay. That worked for you? Yeah. Works for me. All right, guys. So that's a look at a couple of lineups that we're building here. Again, first look. Uh, James and I will be back live at 5 o'clock Eastern tonight uh, on the live stream. Update you with all the information you need to have. We'll rebuild some lineups, go over our favorite plays, uh, and give you some uh, RT Sports pick props as well. I'll be on the playbook, so be on the lookout for that. Get us in the Discord, and James and I will talk to you all later.